A man shot by law enforcement is now suing the agencies involved. Good afternoon, I'm Susan Farley. State police are investigating after human remains were found in Ellsworth yesterday. And the Penobscot Energy Recovery Company has been sold again after a previous sale fell through. Thank you for joining us. We'll have more of these and other stories in just a moment. First, let's check in with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Devin? All righty, happy Wednesday afternoon. A small crowd advisory is posted until 5 a.m. Thursday as we're going to be watching out for some active surf along the coast and a little bit of a breeze on land as well moving forward. Meanwhile, though, a few returns on the radar. I don't think any of this is reaching the ground. We will be watching for increasing clouds again throughout the afternoon period today as there's a system that's off toward our west located right about in here. We can see it right there. It's going to be tracking off towards the east. And all this will do is give us some clouds, and that's what we're going to be watching out for during the afternoon period. So future gas moving forward increase Increasing clouds today, not a huge deal there. We, we, we will have to watch for the clouds to get out of here as we head towards Thursday morning. So no precipitation with this. So just some clouds moving in, and I'll be about it there. Otherwise, though, the winds are out of the south and west throughout the afternoon, up to around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Maybe a few gusts up to 15 miles per hour cannot be ruled out either. We'll keep some of those winds going as we head towards your Thursday as well. So as for today, though, mid-40s, party cloudy, and that south breeze getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Overnight tonight, lower 30s, party cloudy, south wind at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. As we move ahead towards tomorrow, we have lower 50s. Not bad, right? With a lot of sunshine out there and winds turning out of the northwest at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. That hourly forecast for the rest of the afternoon period showing some clouds moving in with temperatures in the 30s and 40s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Thank you, Devin. Two central Maine police departments and one regional communication center are named in a federal lawsuit related to a 2019 officer-involved shooting. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard takes a closer look at the lawsuit and what both sides claim happened. According to court documents, in the early morning hours of November 23, 2019, 27-year-old Robert Farrington was shot by Augusta police at his residence on South Belfast Avenue. The Maine Attorney General's Office, which investigates all officer-involved shootings, cleared the Augusta officer, Sebastian Guptill, who shot Farrington. In a letter to Augusta Police Chief Jared Mills, citing, quote, It was reasonable for Officer Guptill to believe that Mr. Farrington was about to use unlawful deadly force against him. On September 26 of this year, Farrington filed a civil complaint at the federal court in Bangor, naming the Augusta Police Department, Fairfield Police Department, and Somerset County Regional Communications Center, along with officers within those departments. In court documents, Farrington alleges that he was asleep in his home when he was awoken by his fiance and told there was a knocking on the door and someone appeared to be in the backyard. The documents went on to say that Farrington, quote, pointed his weapon downward in the safety position and turned on the light. He then placed the weapon on a table so he could reach down and open the sliding glass door, end quote. After that, the documents say that Farrington heard someone just on the other side of the glass door yell, quote, he's got a gun, and began firing at Farrington, striking Farrington several times from multiple gunshot wounds. Farrington was taken to the hospital for his wounds and arrested on charges of criminal threatening with a dangerous weapon. Farrington is claiming that police violated his constitutional rights and his goal of the lawsuit is to, quote, hold responsible the actors who abuse state power and caused him to be shot in his own home. On November 3rd, Somerset County filed an answer to Farrington's complaint, where among other things they say, quote, plaintiff's damages were directly and proximately caused by the acts and or omissions of an individual and or entity other than the defendants. And goes on to say that Somerset County is entitled to immunity from punitive damages. We've reached out to all other parties involved and have not received a response. We will continue to follow the story. In Augusta, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. A tense situation in Brewer Tuesday. According to the Brewer Police Department, threats were made against some individuals that were in the area of Brewer High School. As a precaution, Superintendent Greg Palmer ordered all schools to go into safety mode. To be clear, the threats were not made against the schools. Brewer Police acted swiftly and took the person into custody. The investigation is ongoing. We'll keep you up to date as more information is released. What started out as a typical day for some land surveyors in Ellsworth ended up with a discovery of human remains state police are now investigating. Just before 9 a.m. Tuesday, the Ellsworth Police Department notified Maine State Police that human skeletal remains had been discovered by commercial land surveyors in the woods off Redbridge Road in Ellsworth. The Maine State Police Major Crimes Unit responded to assist with the investigation. The remains were transported to the Office of Chief Medical Examiner in Augusta, where an autopsy will be performed to determine the cause and man of death. Police say there is currently no risk to the public. The investigation is ongoing. 
The state's Blue Ribbon Commission is studying the organization of and service delivery by DHHS. The group met again Tuesday morning at the State House. The commission is looking at ways to improve on what some say is a failing system after a spotlight has recently been shined on the department's handling of cases that ended up with children and adults dying while in the state's care. Supplemental to that, what we have the opportunity to do is when we gather in the spring of next year, um, is see what happened, see the recommendations that came forward and what was done or not done with them. Um, if there were 10 and, and only the legislature and the DHHS committee, this committee, um, moved forward on four, but there were three that this committee would recommend that the Blue Ribbon Commission pick up and move forward with. The next and final meeting of this Blue Ribbon Commission will be on December 12th, where they will begin to prepare their report of recommendations to the legislature. The Penobscot Energy Recovery Company was sold at auction again Tuesday after a previous sale fell through. The Orrington Perk plant facility was auctioned off to Pennsylvania-based Delta Thermo Energy for $1.5 million on November 2nd, but the buyers pulled out. It sold for $1.2 million at auction Tuesday. Orrington Town Manager Chris Backman says there's a lot of work to be done to get the plant back up and running, starting with winterization. We've got to get ready for winter, save the plant before freezing up, and uh, you know, get some of this you know, stuff burning and generating electricity, get the staff back to work, and, you know, uh, so it's just the beginning of a process. Boswell, who represents the company that purchased the plant, says they plan to use innovative technology to change how the plant operates. He says that technology will allow the facility to move away from burning waste and instead use gasification method to process material. The new technology, actually, there is no front-end processing to begin with and then it goes through a kiln. And that kiln then all of a sudden takes all the organics and makes that into syngas that we produce our electricity with. But everything that comes out the back is 100% recyclable. Planned operations were halted back in May. In September, more than 30 workers were furloughed. Boswell says they plan to retain those employees and he's excited to get them back to work. A well-known member of the Ellsworth community has recently been sworn in as the new president of the Maine Chiefs of Police Association. City Manager and Chief of Police Glenn Mosier sat down with our Grace Blanchard to talk about this new role. All the success that I've had in my personal career has always be come from the people around me. A career public servant, Glenn Mosier has been serving his community for the past 20 years and is now taking on the role of president of the Maine Chiefs of Police Association. That's exciting. Um, you know, I, I've been a member of the organization uh, since prior to becoming a chief. And so, uh, you know, I've, I've seen the work that they do. He says one of his main goals as president is to help foster a sense of community amongst Maine's law enforcement agencies. I think it's critical, especially for new chiefs, young chiefs, to have that support system. Uh, and it was very beneficial to me when I first started as a chief. Mosier says the lessons he has taken away from his role as Ellsworth City Manager will also continue to serve him well. My time as city manager has been a challenging you know, experience for sure. Um, but uh, the support that I've gotten from members of the council uh, when I first took on this role, uh, the community, uh, certainly the staff, uh, has been fantastic. Though he will likely be stepping down as city manager, he plans to continue on as chief of police. Over the past couple decades, Mosher says he has seen Maine law enforcement go through many changes. Some changes are for the better, and you know, some changes uh, others would argue are not for the better. Uh, but ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, you know, our job is still exactly what it was and always should have been, and that's to protect the ser and serve our communities. In Ellsworth, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Coming up on ABC7 News at noon, Bar Harbor Foods is expanding into the state's first Costco store. We'll be right back. If you're a Medicare beneficiary, call now to see how a WellCare Medicare Advantage plan could get you some big benefits, including this all-in-one WellCare Spendables debit card to use for over-the-counter health items. Find out how easy it is to get all of your original Medicare coverage plus extra benefits. A WellCare Medicare Advantage plan is designed to fit your needs so you can be your best every day. You could have medical coverage, coverage for prescription drugs, dental, vision and hearing, 
and the WellCare Spendables debit card to make getting the coverage you need more convenient. The WellCare Spendables debit card can be used for over-the-counter health items. And here's more good news. You can get a WellCare Medicare Advantage plan with a $0 or low monthly plan premium. How can WellCare offer all of those benefits for a $0 or low monthly plan premium? It's simple. Medicare Advantage and Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage are important parts of Medicare. WellCare has a contract with Medicare to offer and provide these important options to you. Call right now to get your free copy of the WellCare All-in-One Guide. Call 1-877-282-3827 now. There is absolutely no obligation for requesting this free information. WellCare offers benefits that go beyond the basics, and we make them easy to use so you can support your best health. Call today to get your free copy of the All-in-One Guide with absolutely no obligation. Your free guide will provide information to make a smart choice for your health care coverage. Just call 1-877-282-3827. Remember, there's no obligation for requesting this free information so call 1-877-282-3827. Call today. Bladder leak underwear has one job. I just want to feel protected. Especially for those sudden gush moments. When your keys are in the door and your body's like, it's happening. If you're worried about your protection, it's not the right protection. Always Discreet protects like no other. With double leak guards that help prevent gushes escaping from the sides and a rapid dry core that locks in your heaviest gush quickly for up to zero leaks. And it contours to every body. Now this is protection. Always Discreet, the protection we deserve. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Far Harbor Foods is expanding into the state's first Costco store. We first visited the company's canning factory in Whiting back in September, where employees can, bottle, and package salmon, clam juice, sardines, and other products. Now even more customers can enjoy Bar Harbor Foods when they shop at Costco, where the company's new New England clam chowder will be available in a six-pack. It also shows how much penetration the brand can have. Costco doesn't take a brand in lightly. Uh, Costco has a very diverse uh, community of, of customers. Um, so, you know, that I think is, is, is hugely exciting. So Costco will officially open in Scarborough on Friday. A new program in Bangor aims to match man's best friend with Maine veterans. Our Devin Dagnall tells us about it. MVP Mutz and More is a new collaborative effort between the Bangor Humane Society and the Maine Veterans Project. Its goal is to match vets with pets that are considered long-stay animals. Animals are typically considered long-stay after they've been at the shelter for more than three months. Right now, the shelter has at least nine long-stay dogs. We typically at the shelter have a couple of dogs every year that have been long-stay dogs that have their own little quirks that just need a little extra time and attention. The Bangor Humane Society's Director of Development and Communication, Catherine Ravenscraft, says veterans are prime candidates for these special pups because of their resiliency. After their military training, uh, they sort of have a built-in stick to a desire to never give up and to not fail the mission. And in this case, the mission is to make sure that these dogs, and some cats too, uh, go into homes with people that they love and with people who are going to provide the kind of environment that they need to be successful. But more often than not, these pets end up saving their veteran owners. To say that he gets it is, is, a, is a profound, profoundly understated term. Doc Goodwin, the president and janitor of the Maine Veterans Project, adopted his best friend Brick after Brick's previous owner committed suicide. Today, the two are inseparable. And when I first got Brick, I would say I was probably at the peak of my own PTSD. Um, you know, this dog's been through a lot with me. Um, we've been through a lot together, and I gotta say, he's played a huge role in my healing, um, you know, we do everything together. He's with me all the time, and I, I genuinely is my best friend. To keep up with or to get more information about MVP Mutz and more, check out the Maine Veteran Project or Bangor Humane Society Facebook pages. In Bangor, Devin Dagnall, EBC7 and Vox 22 News.
A woman from Millinocket has turned to the main outdoors into her daily workspace. As Jody Hersey tells us, she's a wilderness guru who hopes to share the benefits of nature with others. Tori Gray of Millinocket loves the outdoors, no matter the season. So you can enjoy the outdoors year round. It just depends on the gear that you need. Gray has been a main guide for three years and created her own business called The Wilderness Guru, where she offers customers guided hikes, foraging workshops, yoga retreats, and health and wellness coaching. No matter which way people want to connect to nature, that's my role, is to help them do that. Gray, who grew up in Virginia, fell in love with Maine when she was just eight years old. It's just a magic here that you can't find anywhere else. I really just wanted to offer an opportunity to people for them to feel more confident and comfortable in the outdoors. Gray says connecting with nature is so beneficial for an individual's mental and physical health. And there's a lot of science behind it about forest bathing, forest therapy, the phytochemicals and pheromones that the trees release that are actually beneficial for our brains and our bodies and overall health. She offers outdoor trips two to three times a week throughout the summer and fall and other in-person as well as online services throughout the rest of the year. The beautiful thing about nature is that it just is, right? There's no overthinking, there's no trying to climb a corporate ladder. It just exists as it is and there's something about that that's so peaceful. To learn more, log on to thewildernessguru.com. In Mattawamkeg, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. After the break, not all kids are getting the help they need with mental health issues. We've got details when we return. At Living Innovations, we build community. You can be a part of it. We put supporting people first, and that builds a caring community within our workforce and for the people we serve. Living Innovations supports people with disabilities and has flexible work opportunities available. You could become a shared living provider and work from home, or help support people to be active in the community. To learn more, visit livinginnovations.com and check out our employment and home provider opportunities. Become a part of Living Innovations and be part of a community with a purpose. With AAA insurance, by bundling our home and auto policies, we saved over $450. And we were shocked at the savings. When we switched to AAA auto insurance and bundled our policies, we were able to save over $400 every year. Switch to AAA insurance today, and you could save an average of $483 on auto insurance. Compare that to State Farm, GEICO, even Allstate. Call now for your free AAA full picture quote to find out how much you could save. Well, my passion is hang gliding. I've been doing it for over 30 years, and it's like flying. I mean, it's like everything you always dreamed about. AAA insurance helps us save more. And do more. The savings from AAA insurance has allowed me to pursue my passion of making jewelry. It's great to have a little bit of extra cash to do something that you love. To find out how much you could save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 866-460-1310 for your free AAA full picture quote today. You'll be glad you did. Let your creativity run free in the Creative Arts Center, where we offer fun and affordable activities for all ages. Birthday parties, pottery wheel classes, painting lessons, or just for the fun of it. Get fired up for glazing projects as well as acrylics. We offer a wide selection of ceramic products for you to choose from, and we have thousands of pieces ready to paint. We are a Paragon Kiln Dealer and a Laguna Clay Distributor. Stop by the Creative Arts Center today, located just off the Joshua Chamberlain Bridge in Brewer. The Creative Arts Center, where your only limitation is your imagination.
The leaders of the world's top economies are set for high-stakes talks today in California. China's president traveled to the U.S. for the first time in six years to attend the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. Biden says he hopes his one-on-one -on -one meeting with him calms tensions. ABC's Justin Finch has more from Washington. This morning, the world watching San Francisco, where the leaders of two global superpowers are set to meet face to face for the first time in about a year. President Biden says he looks forward to meeting with China's President Xi Jinping. Among Biden's top goals, restoring U.S.-China military ties and to... To get back on a normal course of corresponding, being able to pick up the phone and talk to one another if there's a crisis. China's foreign ministry saying Biden invited Xi to the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. It brings that strong note of optimism as the year comes to a close. It's so easy to look at what divides us. It's more important to look at what unites us. The leaders expected to cover a number of issues on the sidelines, including climate change, the fentanyl crisis, trade and U.S. ally Taiwan. On the San Francisco streets, high security and protest. Authorities quashing clashes between China supporters and anti-China demonstrators who lined the Biden motorcade route. The White House says President Biden won't shy away from tough topics with President Xi, but the administration says it's also aware many Asia-Pacific nations want better dialogue between the U.S. and China in hopes of avoiding a conflict in the region. The mental health of preteens and teens is growing concern, but not all kids are getting the help they need. ABC's Justin Finch has more. Medication and counseling can help teenagers and kids with mental health disorders like depression and anxiety. The 2021 National Health Interview Survey found about 15% of children used mental health services. Kids aged 12 to 17 use mental health services more than kids aged 5 to 11. Medication was used more by boys, while counseling services were used more by girls. White children were the most likely to get mental health treatment. The closer kids live to a big city, the less likely they were to use mental health services. There may be gaps in mental health care due to access issues or stigma against things such as therapy. Open communication and positive social connections can help in improving mental health. Talk to your child's pediatrician if you're concerned about their mental health. With this Medical Minute, I'm Justin Finch, ABC News. When we return, Devin Biggs has your five-day forecast. Does your dream kitchen look like this? Or this? Or maybe you need a little more inspiration. Get it when you explore the complete in-store showroom displays at Hammond Lumber Company. When you find the look you like, the Hammond team will help you customize it, including accurate 3D renderings, so you can visualize your project before the work begins. Hammond offers delivery from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire and professional service after the sale. Your dream kitchen begins when you bring your vision to Hammond Lumber Company. Nice. DraftKings Sportsbook is live in Maine. You'll be so dialed into every plate that you forget to eat your wings. You made my wings cold, DraftKings. Flailing your arms like you can disrupt the free throw. Miss fool! And a home run will have you crying like it's the birth of your child. I'm so happy. DraftKings Sportsbook is live in May. New customers, download the app now and bet $5 to get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Because life's more fun when you're in on the action. The crown is yours. Yeah. Today, there are so many Medicare health plan options. True. And it can be confusing. Are you getting all the benefits that you are entitled to? Here at Senior Planning Center, we represent most plans available to help you secure the benefits that you are entitled to. And this is why thousands of Mainers have turned to the Senior Planning Center as their trusted Medicare resource. With agents and locations across Maine, call today. No obligation to enroll. I feel better again. Oh, I feel better now. With 
so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Z107.3 wants you to help free the Z from the Brewer Hannaford parking lot. The 23rd annual event officially kicked off on Tuesday. Morning show host Kid will stay put in the parking lot until Thursday or until they reach their goal of 2023 turkeys. The radio station is partnering with Penquist to help gather turkeys for those in need. This is the seventh year Z107.3 and Penquist have teamed up for this event. Kid says sleeping in the parking lot for a few days is all worth it knowing many families will be able to have a proper Thanksgiving meal. It's amazing to give back to the community and our listeners are really, really supportive of everything we do. We do a ton of pasta drive throughout the year. So uh, every time we reach out and ask our listeners and people in the community to help out, they always do. Penquist has set their own goal to collect enough turkeys to feed 7,000 households. Community relations manager Renee Muscatel says there's much more need this year than in the past. Really hearing from our, our food pantry partners that they're seeing faces that they've never seen before. You know, a lot of families are just having a hard time to meet basic needs and, you know, they're having to utilize food pantries that they never have had to do before. You can stop by and make a donation of a turkey or some money to support the cause. You can also visit this story on our website to make a donation. Now let's check your full forecast with Devin Biggs. Devin? Today's full weather forecast is brought to you by Healing Hands Massage in Hamden, providing professional massage services tailored specifically for their clients. Stop by Healing Hands Massage today. You'll thank yourself later. As we get into things this afternoon, a small crowd advisory is posted until 5 a.m. Thursday along the coast. Wave heights will be increasing throughout the daytime period today with an area of low pressure offshore and maybe a little bit of a breeze onshore as well here. But for now, we're not too bad out there. One or two foot wave heights being noted here across the region. It's further out towards sea where four to six foot wave heights are being observed. And you can see this green color here. That's higher surf being observed out there at least at this point. But meanwhile, though, on land, not too bad though. We're seeing a few returns on the radar where it should might, which might be a little bit of snow, but I don't think any of this is reaching the ground. I think we're just going to be watching out for the clouds during the afternoon period today as we move forward with the system here that's located right about in here. And this is all going to be tracking off towards these, bringing the clouds with it. I'm not worried about any precipitation. I do think we'll stay dry later on tonight. So future cast Moving forward, though, increasing clouds during the afternoon period. We'll keep the clouds overnight tonight. No precipitation to worry about whatsoever. We'll have some sunshine to start things off for your Thursday. Some clouds will stay to the north. You might get a cloud or two near the Bangor area on uh, Thursday morning, though. But otherwise, as we head towards the afternoon period, a lot of this gets out of here. So Thursday night and Friday morning, looking very cloud-free as we move forward, though. Maybe a few clouds as we head towards Friday morning. Perhaps some fog, if that's what this is. And that will really be about it by Friday morning. Otherwise, though, maybe a little bit of a breeze from time to time to this afternoon reaching up to around 50 miles per hour at its worst, maybe getting close to 20 miles per hour if you're lucky, and I'll be about it there. But later on tonight, maybe a little bit of a breeze, and I'll be about it. But the wind's back off as we head towards Thursday afternoon. Our appetite temperature is now 46 degrees. We'll be close to that today in the middle 40s for those high temperatures. Lower 50s Thursday, middle 50s for your Friday. We're back in the lower 50s Saturday. And then we cool off lower 40s for your Sunday. And here we go, 30s on the way again Monday and also in your Tuesday. So for the rest of today, middle 40s, party cloudy. And that south wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Overnight tonight, lower 30s, party cloudy again. And that south wind at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. As we move ahead towards tomorrow, we have lower 50s, not bad mostly sunny northwest wind at around five to ten miles per hour healing hands massage extended forecast mostly cloudy for the day on friday with highs in the mid 50s rain moves in for the day on saturday with highs in the low 50s and low 40s on sunday with a partly cloudy sky thank you devin that's all for abc 7 news at noon thanks for watching i'm susan farley we'll see you this evening with peter dubois and beth jones on abc 7 news at six have a great afternoon